taken into the custody of Child Protective Services. It's meant to temporarily remove them from a potentially bad situation and to put them into a safe environment. That's why the parents of two-year-old Alexandria Hill were in utter disbelief in July when they got word that their daughter died after suffering a serious brain injury and that the foster care provider taking care of their daughter had been charged with murder. Austin, Texas residents Mary, Mary Sweeney and Joshua Hill agreed to have their daughter placed in, to, into protective custody while they were figuring out who should have ultimate custody over two-year-old Alexandria. Now the family is mourning the loss of their baby girl and looking for answers as to how this horrible tragedy could have ever happened. Mary Sweeney joined me earlier today to tell me her story, and I first asked her when and why protective services took their daughter away. Well, it all started with um, Josh and I getting into an argument, you know, as simple parents do. And uh, it kind of escalated from there. He uh, asked his sister for advice, and she unexpectedly showed up at the ha uh, our apartment. And um, she had gotten furious with her brother, uh, with Joshua. And um, there was a lot of anger and a lot of... Uh, just unhappiness at that at that moment and um, so his sister wanted up calling CPS um, due to uh, Josh's anger issue and um, just how things were panning out at that moment and because I am mother of Alexandria I was part of the situation and it was unfortunate um, it was due to marijuana use um, I did admit that I smoked marijuana um, in the past and I had actually quit at that time before CPS got involved um, but apparently that wasn't enough uh, uh, Josh had said that I was not allowed to be with Alexandria alone um, due to my grandma seizures which um, I have no documentation about that from any doctors um, but back in Florida um, I had a doctor that did tell me that it should be you know recommended that somebody should be there with me um, most of the time if Joshua was at work or anything like that but you know under circumstances there are uh, situations where I can't um, be watched well with Alex and um, so it wasn't something that had to be done it was just you know for safety precautions which I understood um, there was a six-month period that I couldn't drive and I did not drive with Alexandria um, and it just kind of hurt that the fact that I couldn't um, CPS didn't give me the chance to separate myself from Josh and still have Alex while he still worked on himself and how did you learn about your daughter's death I, I learned about Alex's death from a phone call at 11 o'clock at night on uh, July 29th. I had gotten a call um, from the C CPS supervisor. Um, I've got, I had one phone call from her that I did not get. She left a message saying that uh, it was due to Alex and that I need basically needed to give her a call back. And um, I was unfortunately sleeping at that time and um, what woke me up uh, was the multiple phone calls from uh, my caseworker and um, Josh my my ex fiance and um, that's what finally woke me up and I answered the phone call and the only thing that I could was told that I needed to come to Temple that Alex had a little accident and I had an argument with Josh over the phone because he was, you know, understandably uh, very upset. Um, he was on his way down there. At that time, it was around 1, 1 in the morning. And um, so I told him, you know, is she alive right now? And he couldn't answer me. I kept repeating the question. And um, after about three minutes, he could finally tell me, right now she is. And so uh, my partner and I left and um, took off to Temple to uh, McLean's Children's Hospital where she was air flighted to. And 
unfortunately, with my grandma's seizures, they, they took me in a wheelchair, you know, just, just for safety reasons, because the only thing I can, uh, the doctors have no idea why I have grandma's seizures, just the, I'm not epileptic, just to, due to the fact that, that I've come to the realization it's all stress-induced. Um, anytime my blood pressure, anxiety starts going, um, I fall into a seizure. And so I've been learning uh, myself to control um, my feelings and, and everything to, um, t to prevent me from having seizures. And Mary, and, um, we only have about a minute left, but what do you want to tell parents about this situation? What can we learn from this? What we can learn from this is <sighs> This is a very difficult question for me. Um, I am trying to get justice for Alex and make sure that no one else has to be put in this situation ever again. Um, your children always are first and foremost in life and for their safety and for um, making sure they are taken care of. Uh, so this could never happen again um, because this isn't fair. Uh, I had no right, I, I had no reason why this should have happened to me um, as I feel and um, no parent should be put through this and the main focus is justice for Alex as of right now. Mary we are so sorry for your loss and we hope that you uh, finally get the answers that you are looking for in this uh, this tragic case. Mary Sweeney, Alexandria thank Hill's you. mother, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Remember that pesky piece of legislation that we told you about earlier this year, known as the Monsanto Protection Act? Well, against the outcry of farmers, the bill was slipped last minute into the short-term House Agriculture Appropriations Bill for 2013, under the auspice that it would expire in six months' time. Many legislators expressed their surprise and that the Ritter, formerly known as the Farmer Assurance Provision, was even in the bill in the first place. Well, six months have come and gone, and the act has now been approved by the House for a three-month extension. The act shields biotech behemoths like Monsanto, Cargill, and DuPont from the threat of lawsuits as a result of their genetically modified seeds. It also bars federal courts from enforcing the legislation that would force the GMO giants to halt their sales, even if it is known that the product is linked to harmful side effects. The Center for Food Safety 